Piranha 3D in 3D. That was redundant. After an earthquake, a prehistoric species of piranha attack an unsuspecting town near the beach. A small group of people try to stop them and fight to survive. Yeah, this one isn't exactly heavy on plot. And since it manages to work in all of the cliches of this kind of film, it isn't particularly unpredictable either. With that said, it does hold a few surprises. Also, in case you're wondering, this is not for kids. So parents, if you're wondering if this is one of the films that maybe your kid could be allowed to see, no. If you're at all Puritan, if you're bothered by your kids seeing nudity, gore, and violence, then no. If you're watching this video and you think you might not be old enough, no. You know that saying, if you have to ask? This film does not hold back. And perhaps that is appropriate, seeing as how it deals with one of our very primal fears. One of the fears lodged deep within our species subconscious. I'm referring, of course, to the dread we all have of seeing supermodels try to act ghastly. Basically, every single female here, with the exception of one, since she's only ten, was cast for their appearance, not their talent. Or at least, not their acting talent in the traditional film sense, seeing as how a couple of the actresses are, in fact, porn actresses. Because of this film, we actually have to come up with a new word, because the word gratuitous just doesn't cut it with this one. The sheer amount of sexualized women and nudity in this... Let me put it this way. Whenever there's a cut in this film, there's a 75% chance that whatever shot it cuts to will contain breasts and or at least one butt. Granted, some of the time these will be partially devoured, but still. What helps make this seem slightly less sleazy than it really quite clearly is, is the fact that it is shot very nicely. It clearly wasn't just thrown together. I would also like to say, on the whole, this definitely delivers what it promises. The people who put this together wanted you to have a good experience at, at the theater. This was directed by the Frenchman Alexandra Acha, or however you pronounce his assumed surname. The man behind the recent The Hills Have Eyes remake, which I haven't watched, but I might, and Mirrors. A film that is decent enough, but mostly for the effects, and not really at all for the story. And I understand that he's also helming the tentatively titled overly gory remake of a late 70s or early 80s horror film with a fan base. This is a man who likes brutal, bloody violence and gore. A lot. However, he's also a man who's really good at it. Not to mention one of the too few current horror directors who actually kind of know what they're doing, in spite of their films having a ton of gore and violence. Perhaps you already know this about me, but I don't particularly care for horror where you don't care if someone dies, where you're basically just watching someone die. There's no tension or suspense to the idea that someone might die if we don't care about them. It's even worse if we outright dislike them and hope that something bad will happen to them. But with the two movies that I've seen by Alexandra, he's shown quite clearly that even if we don't know a ton about these characters, he can still make us care. And that's too rare a trait in horror today. The characterizations in this are very swift. No real depth to any of the characters. They're basically archetypes. 
helps. But whenever one of the main characters is in peril, we care. And several of the deaths of the bathing suit clad extras are fairly effective as well. Now I suppose you could say about the gore and violence that you mostly see the aftermath of the attacks. And at times the CGI is pretty obvious. The practical effects are excellent though. I understand Greg Nicotero worked on this. He hasn't lost his skill. A lot of the dialogue is pretty bad. Almost all of the acting is really bad. The two kids are especially unconvincing. Then again, who's watching this for either of those? The climax is oddly weak. I really don't know what happened there. For the most part, this keeps to a very fast pace. You're never bored, and I know what you're saying. Come on, how could we be bored? It's a 90 minute movie. Well, it's 90 minutes of low characterization, few even remotely likable characters, almost no plot progression, and where you basically know how things are gonna turn out a lot of the way. And yet, Alexandra never lets us be bored. Whenever we aren't seeing an attack or a scene of rising tension as an attack is imminent, we get boobs. And a lot of them. If you're a straight young male, there's always something for you to look at in this. Is it excessive? Some will say so. It's a guilty pleasure, to say the least. I still say that if the tendency is irrevocably moving in this direction, then at least let's get some good directors doing it. Like the case with this one. The 3D is pretty good. It's not overused. They do make sure to throw a couple of things at the screen, at us including one pretty disgusting thing. You'll know what I mean when you see it. In a cast of relative unknowns, talents like Ving Rhames and Christopher Lloyd are horribly underused. Rhames' character essentially entirely lacks personality. I think he's like a deputy to the sheriff, and he doesn't even really get to be badass like he almost always is. Well, I mean, no more than he is just by his mere presence. They don't play it up very much, at least. Lloyd gets to choose some scenery as that old person in these kind of flicks who knows exactly what's going on and explains it in a big, dramatic speech. I like Jerry O'Donnell, but we didn't see very much of his usual charm in this. He's very clearly playing a parody of the guy who started the whole Girls Gone Wild thing, and the material seems to focus entirely on just controversy. Can someone please explain to all these people in both the film and the video game industry who evidently have a considerable amount of creative control that just breaking taboo doesn't make it funny or even interesting if you're not actually saying something with it, or going somewhere new with it, all you're doing is being offensive. I have no problem with someone being offensive, but when you intentionally seek to shock members of your audience, since eventually what you're saying might be okay, I mean, what is offensive today was unheard of just decades ago. Eventually, it'll have been said so many times that people will be used to it and it's no longer taboo. So when you do seek to shock, please have some point with it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, look at South Park, look at American Dad, the reason they resonate so well with audiences is that there is, quite often, a point behind the offensive material. This is essentially a throwback to 80s exploitation horror, and on the whole, it does succeed. 
it creates a mood and at times builds tension and it is 90 minutes of non-committal uninhibited fun it's not quite as much fun as it wants to be and as I kinda have the feeling it thinks it is but as long as you know what you're in for and you just turn off the logic centers in your brain and just allow yourself to enjoy it you probably will get a kick out of this you may forget it relatively soon after I imagine I will and don't get me wrong I'm definitely not saying to not at all be critical of this I would never suggest to not be critical of something but I am saying that if you judge this based on what it's intending to be I'd say there's a pretty good chance that you'll like it. There are some plot threads that don't really feel like they get resolved as well as immensely unmotivated actions by characters and those kind of distract and detract. On the whole a lot of fun, gory, brutal, gives you great things to look at and I mean both what they filmed and how they filmed it and a guilty pleasure. That was my spoiler-free review of Piranha 3D in 3D. Hope you enjoyed.